Hi, we've got a statum that's just come into the workshop for repair. Um, our fault unknown at this stage. So uh, what we'll do, first thing we always check with the statums is with the cassettes as you push them in. And you should actually hear the solenoid click. In this instance, I'm not hearing the solenoid click. So it tells me there's either a problem with the micro switch detecting the, um, the cassette or the solenoid has burnt out coil or the um, solenoid is uh, jammed. So this is out of an orthodontist so it's quite possible there might be a bit of orthodontic wire stuck in the solenoid valve. So we'll just see if it starts, allows us to start a cycle. So it allows us to start a cycle, so that tells me that the micro switch is working correctly. So the next step for us to do is to have a look at the um, solenoid valve itself. Okay, so in order to get the covers off, first thing we need to do is remove the cassette out of the unit. We'll put that aside, um, unplug the unit and make sure the power is switched off, which we've done. Power lead is unplugged. Okay, so on the side we've got two screws on either side with a Phillips head screwdriver and we have three screws on the back. One here, one here and one here. You don't take that one out, that holds the solenoid bracket. So give me two seconds and I'll whiz those screws out. So, as while I do this I just noticed a common mistake. You'll see here these two side screws hard to tell actually have a star washer the screws with a star washer need to go on the back not the side of the machine um, otherwise as you'll see you'll damage the um, paint on the powder coating of the unit so okay now we've taken the screws out we need to loosen the bacteriological filter and then you'll see down here the feet are a little way back so what we want to do so we want to move the autoclave forward to the edge of the bench. I'm going to have to pause the camera here. So now you see the feet sitting right on the edge of the bench because we need to lift the cover forward and rotate it. Uh, this side here we've got a ribbon, short ribbon cable for the keypad and for the display screen and it's very easy to um, munch those. I'm going to try and do this with one hand. Uh, don't know how successful it will be. So cover just rocks forward like this. I'm going to have to put this down. That was no bloody good. So you'll see the two ribbon cables I'm talking about. And what we tend to do is just put the cover on one of the feet under there so that if it gets bumped. Now at this point we can move the whole thing back onto the table so it's not going to get bumped or damaged. So we've now got the autoclave safe on the bench so someone walking by is not going to bump it. If that does get a gentle knock... Uh, that's nice and secure and it's not going to rip the whole thing off in the guts of the, um, the circuit board. Okay. Okay, we've now got the cover off. The um, unit's now plugged in and switched on. And we've got power on the unit and the display is connected. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a magnetic testing switch. So what I want to do is... And we'll see that the lights lit up. So that's telling me that we've got power to the coil. So now I've taken it out. Um, so we know that the uh, coil is working and the uh, solenoid. So what I suspect at this point is we have the typical orthodontic wire stuck in the solenoid valve and armature. Okay, so what we need to do is switch the unit off and unplug it. Just from a caution perspective, um, we've got the heating element here and the power to it. Now this is an American unit, um, or out of Canada, and they switch the neutral on the components. So what that means is that these terminals here are all live. So if you accidentally bump them or short them out to the um, chassis, 
um, and you create a path for the power to earth, uh, you'll get an electric shock. So we tend to put a bit of tape, as you can see here, around the terminals. It's a high temperature tape because that boiler gets up to um, 135, 140 degrees Celsius. So uh, this is a newer model. We've got a pressure transducer, um, boiler, solenoid valve, drying pump, uh, water pump. So at this point what we need to do is grab an 11 16 spanner because what we want to do is um, take the solenoid coil off. So we just loosen that. So it's important to make sure you've got the power disconnected before you do that. Now, to get the um, solenoid armature off, you'll see you've got a couple of holes here. Don't use circuit pliers or anything like that. The easiest way to get that out is to put the nut back on. And grab another nut. And do those two nuts up tight together and use those to um, undo them. Let's see if I can put the camera down. Have a look at that. And now we can undo the undo the armature. And what we're looking for is you'll see there the um, plunger is actually stuck sorry the plunger is stuck in there so I suspect that's a bit of orthodontic wire so we'll just grab a little flathead screwdriver Yeah, it's in there good and tight now that's popped up we'll empty it out now you can't see this so we'll try and do that there'll be a spring and a little copper washer sometimes a little copper washer gets stuck in there but we'll get that out with a bit of compressed air so at this point I haven't seen a little bit of auto wire yet or what's caused the sticking but that's nice and clean in there um, there's a little bit of debris in there so we'll give that a clean up and the spring looks intact so if everything looks okay we'll just give it a clean and I'll come back shortly so you'll see there the parts of the you got the stem the poppet the spring the little copper washer and the o-ring so it's important that you make sure you have just those make sure that you only have one of these copper discs in uh, sometimes if you don't blow out the original one if you repair it um, we've cleaned out it's a bit hard to see but we've now cleaned out the inside with a bit of scotch bright uh, we generally give that a blow out with compressed air and then um, we'll reassemble the the, um, the solenoid valve Now we've reassembled the solenoid valve, we just want to make sure that's nice and free and loose and it's not sticking at all or anything like that because that will cause us problems. That seems all okay now, so we'll put that back. So we've just... So you'll see we've I put the O-ring inside there first um, before I put it in and we want to make sure when you've got that in there that the spring's not bent over or anything like that so when I put the pop it inside the stem I usually do it on its side so that the spring doesn't drop out and then we just put that in screw that up and with our ring spanner just nip it up okay now we'll undo the nuts and put the solenoid coil back on and we'll test it Let's look at that, with the marvels of modern technology, the solenoid coil is now put back on. So now it's time to um, put some power on the thing and test it. So we switch it on, we've got power, and we can hear that solenoid clicking. Hear that nice click.
And there we go. So that's all good. So at this point, we'll check that we've got some clean distilled water in the tank. That looks a bit grubby, that tank. It actually appears more grubby in the video than it does in real life. But what we're looking for is you see those probes at the back. Make sure we've got enough water that we've covered the probes and then we can start a cycle. So we want to make sure that we have the tube plugged in the back. Now that's a Teflon tube going to our condenser bottle and we have a little bit of water in the bottom of the bottle to condense the water. So what we'll do is we'll start that and we'll push the start button. This one has a um, data logger and unfortunately we haven't brought the data logger back with us. So it's now preheating and we can um, just wait for it to go through its cycle. So we can now hear the steam going into the uh, into the cassette. So the water pump is pumping. And at this point here, we should have steam coming out of the So as the pressure builds up, so you can actually see the water being squirted in. Oh, it's hard to see and see the. So it statum squirts the uh, we're not actually getting any should have some steam flowing at this point. Oh there we go. Now the steam starts to flow. And I think I heard the sound red click right. Hard to see on the camera, but you'll see that the steam flowing out. So what it's doing now is it's getting rid of the um, all the air out of the chamber. Let's have a look and see what the screen says. I don't know if we're going to be able to read that. It sits in its conditioning phase, 107, so we've got positive pressure. So that's all good. So I'll pause the um, camera here because the rest of this is pretty boring. But you'll see now the solenoid valve will start it's off. We build up a bit of pressure. So you see the solenoid valve operating? Fantastic. You'll also see the water filters we retrofit to these. Watch pots never boil, my friend. You see the water going through the water filter? So the cycle's um, completed, and we're now um, in the drying stage. The screen's very hard to read, and um, while we're here, we can actually hear the solenoid buzzing a little bit. That's usually to do with that um, copper disc, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. But uh, it's gone through a cycle, no problems at all. And the um, drying pump's working. Fantastic.